When I say tropical vacation, probably the first word that comes to mind is the Bahamas. But one thing you probably don't know is that the Bahamas is actually a country, and an interesting one at that. It was able to transform a couple of rocky islands into the third richest country in North America. It was home to pirates and had a role during the American Revolution and Civil War. It, is, it has the largest military of all Caribbean countries. It's the land of sharks, flamingos, extravagant resorts, reefs, and low-lying islands. And it's one of the most stunning places in the world. Today, 50 years after independence, we cover the place's unique history and dive into its geography, economy, and politics of today. So let's take a look at the history of the Bahamas. The first people to settle in the islands of the Bahamas were the Taino people, however, they did not stay for long because the rocks on the Bahamas are horrible for tool making, but it was an ideal fishing spot so people came for a few days and left with loads of fish, however, this allowed the people who did stay to avoid wars with the other Taino people, but they did eventually leave permanently and in the year 700, the first Lucayan people permanently settled the Bahamas from either Cuba or Espanol. Fabiola. It's still debated. Anyway, these people started to spread around the islands except for the northern area, around what is now Freeport. Due to lack of resources, trade was important to the Lucayans, and they mostly traded fish and whatever else they could find that was valuable. In 1492, Columbus landed on San Salvador Island, and this was a peaceful landing. However, the Lucayans did help supply Columbus's ship and gave him exotic Lucayan goods. All in all, they saw each other positively, however, he also kidnapped some to take home. The islands were claimed by the Spanish, but they called them, quote, the useless islands. The Lucayan peoples had mixed interactions with the Europeans. Sometimes they were kidnapped, sometimes they traded goods, but the Spanish also used them as a staging ground for the colonization of the Caribbean. However, the Lucayans slowly disappeared from disease and slavery, until, unfortunately, the indigenous peoples of the Bahamas were all gone. For the next 150 years, no one settled on the Bahamas until some British Puritans fled Bermuda and landed on Eleuthera, meaning freedom in Greek. More arrived and eventually they also settled in New Providence, which is today Nassau. In 1670, King Charles II granted the islands to the governors of the Carolinas. However, the governors were repeatedly driven away by the people who did not want restrictions on their lives. It was around this time that piracy became popular. With all the ships wrecking in its shallow waters, the Spanish, the pirates, and the French repeatedly raided the Bahamas and burnt down towns. It was also around this time that the islands got their name, derived from the word Bahamar, meaning shallow waters. The new governor had connections with the pirates and was even broken out of jail by them. The new governor had helped develop the colony, however, he did allow pirates to work for the governor to defend the islands. However, this did not work as in 1703, a joint Spanish-Franco expedition briefly occupied the islands during the Spanish War of Secession, and many of the privateers were unemployed and became pirates. They founded the Pirate Republic and caused a ton of problems for literally everyone, including themselves. British offered a reward and forgiveness to any pirate who surrendered. Most took up the offer, and when the new governor arrived, the Pirate Republic was no more. Some colonists also arrived in the Bahamas, and it slowly grew. However, during the American Revolution, the Spanish took over the Bahamas, and after the war, loyalists fled to the Bahamas. Since the soil in the Bahamas did not allow for tons of plantations, slaves were actually treated well, and eventually were freed earlier than others. It was also nice for them because it was paradise. The island also helped Confederate ships and allowed them to dock. Soon, during the 1890s, people used Nassau as a trading port and the economy skyrocketed. During the First World War, only 30 Bahamians served. In the 1920s, more money came to the island when the US outlawed alcohol. People went there to drink and relax, which saw the first cruise ships make their way to the island, though most were ocean liners doing cruises. However, most of them still went to Cuba, but this would not be forever. 
1940, the Duke of Windsor went to the Bahamas and became governor. He described the islands as a third-class colony but improved infrastructure, curbed poverty, and helped stop riots. However, he always hated the Bahamas because of its mostly black population. During the war, airports were built and this allowed them to be used after the war. In 1960, the U.S. blocked travel to Cuba and this boosted the economy. It also helped that the Bahamas were a haven for offshore bank accounts. Taxes were also cut. In 1958, the Progressive Labor Party was formed to try to gain independence. During this time, the United Bahamian Party was formed and its goal was to keep the Bahamas British. However, the elections were rigged and the UBP won. During the next election, the two parties won the same amount of seats. However, the Labour Party supported the PLP, and they won. This made them the first black government, and in 1968, Sir Lyndon Pindling announced the Bahamas would seek full independence. On the 22nd of June, 1963, the House of Lords voted to give Bahamas full independence, and on July 10th, 1973, Prince Charles announced that the Bahamas was now a commonwealth. The Union Jack was lowered, and in its place rose a flag with blue and yellow stripes for sand and water, and a black s a triangle symbolizing the black people of the Bahamas to move forward. The island then joined the IMF, World Bank, and the United Nations. Using tourism and offshore finance, the Bahamas economy prospered, and cruise lines like Carnival, Norwegian, Royal Caribbean, and Premier made the country famous and boosted the economy. However, education, healthcare, housing, drug trafficking, and immigration from Haiti would continue to be issues. In 1980, a Bahamian patrol boat was sunk by a Cuban jet while towing illegal fishermen out of Bahamian water. This legitimized the defense force and taught the Bahamians the cruelness of being a nation. The Bahamas grew in popularity and the economy, and in 1998, the Atlantis Resort was built and became an iconic part of the Bahamas. In 2019, a hurricane destroyed the country and the country is still rebuilding. The Bahamas began investing into oil to cover the loss of tourism during the COVID-19 pandemic. And that brings us to today. The Bahamas is located east of Florida, north of Cuba, and west of the UK, more specifically the Turks and Caicos Islands. It's made up of about 700 islands, MKs, and 2,000 rocks. Only 40 islands are inhabited, however. Bimini is the farthest west of the islands, and Andros is the largest. The most populated island is New Providence, which holds 70% of the population, as well as the largest city, Nassau. Nassau is also the capital, and on New Providence, you can find Lind Linden Pindling Airport, which is the main hub for people flying in. Right in the city center of Nassau is the cruise terminal, which is where most of the cruise ships dock. The second largest city is Freeport, and is also the fastest growing city in the country. The highest point is on Cat Island, which sits 63 meters above sea level. Only a small number of lakes are located in the Bahamas, and one river on Andros Island. On Exuma Island is also where the swimming pigs are located. And if you're wondering what this big underwater thing is from above, it's the Great Bahama Bank, formed from thousands of years of winds blowing the sand so that it goes into the water and makes this formation. And from the surface as well, it's pretty stunning. This is why I say the Bahamas is one of the most beautiful places. The Bahamas is a constitutional monarchy with the king slash queen of England as its head of state. Legislative power is vested in a 36-member parliament with one member for every district as well as a 16-member senate. The House of Assembly carries out all major decisions as under the Westminster system. The Prime Minister may dissolve the parliament and call an election at any time. The Bahamas has two-party system dominated by the center-left Progressive Liberal Party and the center-right Free National Movement. A number of small parties exist like the Bahamas Democratic Movement and the Bahamas Nationalist Party. The Bahamas has good relations with the United States and the UK and with embassies in other countries like Canada, Japan, and the Gambia. Its military is the Royal Bahamas Defense Force, with the Navy, which is composed of a land unit called the Commando Squadron, and an Air Wing, which is the Air Force. However, it only consists of King Airs, P-68s, and Cessna Caravans, which isn't really good for intercepting things, but it's good for scouting at least. 
Its role is the defense of the Bahamas, to protect its territorial waters, and, most importantly, to help with disaster relief. It also works as the police force of the water. The Royal Bahamas Defense Force is also part of the CARICOM Security Task Force. Ever since, the main issue is drug smuggling, which is what most of the task force does. The Defense Force has 26 ships, 3 planes, and 1,100 troops. The Bahamas relies on tourism to generate most of its economy. However, business and financial services are the second most popular industries. Surprisingly, the next largest industry is agriculture, not fishing, mostly growing oranges and bananas. With its low taxes, it's no wonder businesses and people flock to the Bahamas. The port of Nassau is even expanding to add the ability for cruise ships to begin and end their journey in the Bahamas. I would go more into detail, but the government app I used for a lot of this research uses many technical money terms, which I can't tell more about even if I wanted to. The Bahamas has truly exceeded everyone's expectations and become a rich, developed, famous, and influential nation. It has become more than just rocks off Florida and has become one of the big dogs of the Americas. The Bahamas has earned their independence, and let's hope that the next 50 years will be as prosperous and that the remaining problems can be solved and the success will continue.